Today's the 6th of June. We're going to be doing three things today to prepare one of my project lawns, Robbie's lawn, for summer. Now, I'm currently standing in my own lawn right now, but the rest of this video is going to be set in Robbie's lawn. It's a lawn that I've been working with him on a little bit, let's call it periodically, over the past 12 months. This video is step five in my Fix Your Yard series of videos, but it should serve as a standalone summer prep video as well if you haven't been following along with the rest of the series. I will link to the playlist for all of these videos down in the description below if you care to take a look. All right, Robbie. For the month of June, I don't care if you've got a cold season grass like you do, or a warm season grass. So any of the people living down south that run warm season grass, this applies to you guys too. The month of June is actually a pretty darn good time to put fertilizer on the ground. For cold season grasses like yours, your grass has been thickening up and a lot of the grass that's in there is probably putting on seed heads. If it's like any other lawn that I've seen in my neighborhood, there are seeds popping up, seed heads. And those seeds aren't necessarily going to reseed the lawn. A lot of them are sterile. Uh, so as we cut them off, the plant has spent its energy making these things that are basically pointless. So at the end of the seed head flush, which is usually somewhere in the middle parts of June, right now it's June 6th, it's a good idea for a cold season lawn to push some extra fertilizer in there to re-nourish the lawn. And in your particular case, this is more important because of the bare dirt spots that we got. Now we've been working to fill this in. We did some seeding back in uh, September and October, and we've done some pre-emergence. We can't put seed down now. So the only way to fill those spots in is to make the grass grow into them. The grass is already there. So we're gonna be putting down um, a, a fair chunk of nitrogen into the lawn, but we're a cool season grass and we're going to be going into high heat here very soon. And these grass types don't really like that. So we're going to be pushing sustained slow growth with a product that is a 1006. It's completely uh, naturally sourced stuff. So this is, a, we've almost always used over-the-counter products on your line. We're not gonna, this isn't an over-counter product. Um, I've never seen this in a store, but your source of nitrogen is soybean meal. So you could just go off to a random uh, garden store and find anything with soybean meal in it, um, or just straight soybean meal. Uh, but that's the nitrogen source, and then we're getting um, a good dose of potassium, and that's gonna help with the, um, uh, the resistance to drought and heat stress for cold season lawn as we're going into summer. Now, I have to say, if you run a warm season grass, which you don't, if you run a warm season grass, you could probably put down more nitrogen and faster release nitrogen because warm season grasses are going into their highest growth phase of the year. That doesn't apply to us. So that's what we're doing. Now, regardless where you live in the country, anywhere in the country, grub control, this is the time of the year to do it. And we're not talking about killing grubs. grubs are basically the larvae of the beetles that we see in Mays and Junes. That's what we call them, the June bugs. Uh, they burrow under the ground, uh, they drop eggs, and then all the larvae comes out usually in July. Nobody notices the larvae because it's all underground. Uh, but that's the best time to kill these things because we can put down the weakest, uh, safest products on the lawn possible and it will still kill them. If we wait till other parts of the year, then we have to put down pretty harsh chemicals. One, uh, there are basically three, in my opinion, there's others out there, but there are three main options that you really have, in my opinion, for controlling these things. You can put down an imidacloprid, and that's something that you'll find, this is a bottle, Ike's Grub Control, 21% uh, imidacloprid. This is going to really kill things quickly and efficiently. It's gonna be the best at killing everything, but it's also the most detrimental to the environment and the biology around the property. Um, I really would only consider using this if you had a serious infestation right now. Like if you just have tons and tons of beetles and you have grub damage from the year prior, maybe I would consider this. But we're not gonna do that. One of the other main options is the stuff that I put down in my lawn. This is a bacterial strain, which we just generically call BT. And this stuff goes down into the lawn. It's literally bacteria that grubs don't like. It's like they're, it's like it's poisonous to them, um, but it's only them. 
So there are tons of different, these uh, BT bacterial strains that will target other pests. We're only interested in grubs. This is the safest product for people, pets, mm -hmm. and all of the critters and flying it. Everything that could possibly come into your yard, this is the safest for them, except for the grubs, it'll kill it. This is a pretty expensive product uh, and it is fast acting, but it's also not gonna act for a long time. So the way that I put this down is in uh, stages. I do a split applicator, I do three applications, three one-third size applications for this to my yard, because uh, each application lasts for only about 10 to 12 days. So this is not only a little bit more expensive, but it's harder to apply for the average Joe. We're not gonna put this down here because I don't wanna come out to the yard every 10 days to apply this with Robbie, and I don't think Robbie wants me over here that often either. <laughs> He also doesn't have a serious grub problem. We're just going to try to prevent problems. So we're going to go with the third option. This is Scott's Grub X. This is just generic. I mean, it's not generic. It's a brand name. But I find it to be generic because you can buy this probably at your grocery store. This is a product that uses chlorintranilaprol. Um, I always have trouble saying that word. Chlorintranilaprol. This product is going to be better at killing the grubs than the BT is, but it's not going to kill them as, or the grub larva, it's not going to kill them as well as the imidacloprid, but it is safer for the biology of your lawn. The hitch is, this is what people don't see when they read the label, they have to really inspect the active ingredient and research it a bit. It needs to go down early. That bag says you can put it all the way down to the early parts of summer, but just don't believe it because the active ingredient hits the soil and you have to water it in and it takes a while for that active ingredient to activate in the lawn and actually do what it's supposed to do. Today's June 6th, we got plenty of time because the larva, these egg, like these grub eggs, they don't open up until usually around early July. That gives us four solid weeks for this product to activate itself in the lawn and then kill off those larvae be before they come, before they become a problem. That's what we're gonna do. And it actually doesn't take very much either. This bag yeah. is about 15 pounds. For a thousand square feet, the yard space that we're on right now, we're only putting down like three pounds of it. So this one bag for you would last five years. I'd have to time. check to see if it would last that long in the garage but that's a pretty affordable thing for a person with a small yard um, and that's what we're going to do so today we're going to be putting this down the reason for that is it's cost effective this is a relatively small lawn space in the middle of nature like we're in the forest here uh, i don't believe we're going to have a serious noticeable effect on the uh the beneficial bug population around here doing this small application of this product. If you did have a particularly bad problem, or maybe it wasn't June 6th, then it might be like mm. June 28th, where we're getting a little bit too close to, like that's full on summer at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just too far advanced. That's when you might consider doing the imidacloprid. Uh, like I said, Ike's carries that, and that's something that you can pick up at Walmart and a number of other places, probably online and certainly in some other stores any brand that uses imidacloprid is pretty much going to be the same thing but i'm not telling you to do that because it's a pretty harsh chemical and that's what i try to stay away from personally now those are the products that we're putting down but that's not really all of the things that we need to be doing to prepare for summer to also prepare for summer this is like wildly important and it's the simplest thing that you could possibly do it literally is to look at your lawnmower and say that's too low you really need to raise the deck up pretty much about as high as it goes. And the reason for that is because as we raise the deck up, that, that way when we cut it with the mower, we're leaving the blades longer. So that's a physical barrier. It's a physical stop between the sun's rays and the soil underneath it. By having four inch tall grass that is well manicured, meaning you cut it frequently or cut it often, but never cut it shorter than about three and a half to four inches, you're literally giving a larger insulation barrier between the sun and the soil, meaning that soil is gonna retain moisture longer. 
your grass isn't going to dry out as much. You're not going to have to water it as often. And you're unlikely or you're less likely to experience dead spots in the middle of the summer because of heat and drought. Like that literally that two inches or so above the soil in the middle of the summer can get blistering hot. You might be up here and the air temperature is 95. But if you were to take a temperature of the soil, and not, not the soil, but the air an inch above the soil, it will be significantly hotter than that. So giving that shade is very important. Let's bring the, the height of your mower up. All right. You actually don't have to, you actually don't even have to mow as often when that height is up. You don't have to mow regularly, yeah. but because it's taller, you don't have to mow it as often because you're never cutting that much percentage wise of the grass blade off every mowing session. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll right. apply these products and that's it for the summer. There's really nothing else to do other than mow and water. All right, that's not exactly true. There are a lot of extra nitpicky, not nitpicky, but uh, very precision kinds of things that we can be doing to our lawns in the summer to help them perform better. Also watering the lawn, I glazed over it in that last segment. Watering the lawn in the middle of the summer uh, is an art form. And I go into it significantly in this video right up here as my deep summer lawn care guide for cool season grasses. Make sure to take a look at that if you want to learn a little bit more about summer lawn care and watering. But down in the description below are links to some of these products that we used, but also an article over on the Turf Mechanic website that goes more into grub control. And then of course the playlist for this whole series is down there as well.